I'm fed up hearing rumours about Tesla that quite frankly aren't true, so I've taken my top 10 myths I hear about frequently and going to bust them wide open for the lies that they are. If you're a current Tesla owner who's fed up hearing about them like me, or a prospective one who's being part of buying a Tesla, I'll be providing all the cold hard facts you need to set the record straight. We'll be talking batteries, charging, full self-driving, Tesla killers, true costs, all the things you probably read about on a daily basis. I've given myself 15 minutes to do this, let's not waste any time and get going. The first big one that you always get asked with an electric car is, don't you have to replace your battery from what I've read every few years? Well, touch wood, I know that's veneer, but it'll have to do. Um, I've not had to replace my battery once in the three years I've owned my Model 3. But what about a few years from now? Am I gonna have to replace it then? Well, the answer is highly unlikely. Now, I appreciate the Model 3's not been around long enough to know for sure, but let's look back at Tesla's history. The Model S came out in 2012, it's coming on for 10 years old now, and most of them have done hundreds of thousands of miles and not needed a single battery replacement. There's one Model S that's done 500,000 miles and still going strong. A group of Tesla owners in a Dutch-Belgium Tesla owners forum have been doing their own research on this, and they've been logging the data of 350 plus vehicles and seeing what the battery degradation is like. Now, what they've found is over the first 50,000 miles, you tend to lose about 5% of your battery, but then it significantly levels out. And they've found that you have to do about 186,000 miles before you get to the 10% loss. Now, obviously there's some irregularities in there, but that's the average that they found across the range. Not only that, if you have any concerns, Tesla guarantee your battery. So they'll guarantee it up to 100,000 miles or eight years, a bit higher on some models, to retain at least 70% of its capacity. And if it drops below that, they'll replace the battery for you. My Model 3 has lost 11% range since new. In March 2020, on a full charge, it was getting 233 miles. When I've remeasured it now, March 2022, I'm getting 227 miles. So it seems to have significantly stopped that decline in the battery degradation. And to be fair, I never measured it when I first got it in September 2019. So I don't really know what it came with. So that most of that 11% drop is potentially in that first six months. And I don't know for sure what the battery came with. So maybe I just got a faulty battery from day one and it didn't have the capacity that was advertised. I don't know. Either way, I'm not too worried because it seems to have significantly leveled off in the last few years. And even if it does carry on at that rate, Tesla have guaranteed the battery anyway. Batteries new replacing every few years? Myth busted. Next up, Teslas are more expensive and overpriced compared to their combustion car equivalents. Now on face value, this might look to be true because if you look at the starting price tag of the BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, Mercedes A-Class, they start in the low £30,000 bracket. And obviously the starting price for the Tesla Model 3 is around £40,000. So it's £10,000 more expensive. That is until you try and spec it similar to the Model 3 though. On the Model 3, you get panoramic roof, lumbar support, power assisted seats, autopilot, massive entertainment system, heated seats, power fold mirrors, the list goes on, but I think I proved my point. Once you start to tick all those boxes on the models I've just mentioned, they start to become very comparable to the Model 3's price, if not more expensive. And then don't forget there's no tax on the Model 3. The maintenance costs are tiny, if anything. I've not spent anything on maintenance on my Model 3 in three years. I might regret that, it might fall apart tomorrow. Um, and then electricity costs are about a tenth what you spend on fuel every month. For me, it's a no-brainer. If you're considering buying new and you're looking at any of the models I've just mentioned, it's gonna be a Tesla every single time. So Teslas are more expensive than comparable combustion cars? Nah. Next up is Tesla Autopilot, and it goes out of its way to try and kill people. Now, I know this is gonna be controversial because there's plenty of evidence of accidents occurring where people have had serious injuries or deaths whilst using Autopilot. But what we need to remember is it's still meant to be a level two driver assist feature and the driver is still meant to pay attention to the road when they're using it. If we just put aside the fact that it's called autopilot or full self driving for a minute, even when it's only meant to be a level two driver assist feature, most of the accidents that get reported, the driver is either asleep, on their phone, playing games with one case is to be believed, not even in the driver's seat. That's clearly a misuse of the software. Even of the accidents that have been reported, as far as where autopilot didn't really cause the accident, it just failed to identify and avoid it. In my opinion, autopilot isn't actively going out of its way to kill people. If it was, it'd be swerving us into oncoming traffic. In fact, Tesla reports on the number of incidents that occur on autopilot, and off the top of my head, I think when I last looked, it was like four million miles driven for every accident on autopilot. 
But if you take that without any driver assist features on whatsoever, you get an accident every 685,000 miles. So clearly there is some safety benefit in using autopilot. So if autopilot is used in the circumstances it's designed to be used in, i.e. level two driver assist and the driver is still paying attention, it is proven to be safe and beneficial. It's not some rogue AI that's going out there trying to eliminate the human race. Not yet anyway, give it a few years. <laughs> Talking about killing, the next one that is up is Tesla killers, a term that is used for every single EV that comes out in a market segment that Tesla have a product in. Can we just admit that first of all, Tesla are way ahead of the game when it comes to electric cars, battery technology and powertrains. Don't get me wrong, other manufacturers might have the edge in one area, but overall Tesla have the superior product, especially if you consider supply chains and charging infrastructure in that. So is another company going to come out with an EV that is so good, everyone suddenly turns around and goes, Tesla's? Old news, don't want to get one of them. No, don't think so. Secondly, as Tesla well know, making EVs is actually harder than it looks. So even if the best EV come out tomorrow, they've still got to make the thing. Even some of the mainstream manufacturers are struggling with production, with many models having waiting lists of months or even years in some cases. Tesla is just about managing to keep up with demand, but that's with opening new factories all the time or expanding their existing ones. If Tesla can bring out a model for each of the market segments with their experience in tech, they won't be going anywhere anytime soon. And even if a better EV does come along, there's plenty of pieces of the pie for everyone to have. On a similar theme, this next one is about how mainstream manufacturers are catching up and going to overtake Tesla. Now whilst I'd agree, mainstream manufacturers are definitely making more EVs, I wouldn't really say this is catching up or overtaking Tesla. And it's not as if the CEOs of these companies actually believe it themselves, with many of them in shareholder meetings commenting how far they're behind Tesla and how they need to be more like Tesla. The one that springs to mind the most is the CEO of Volkswagen, who I secretly think admires Elon Musk for how he's taken a small little startup to mass production, mass market so quickly. In notes to his management team, he'd noted how Tesla were always renowned for their software, their range and their acceleration, but were ridiculed pretty much for their production. But he pointed out how quickly Tesla were improved their production and getting better and better customer feedback and it's saying Tesla is now setting the standards and is the benchmark with them becoming more and more competitive. The Model 3 outsells the Golf in Europe and that's before Tesla even have a facility in Europe to manufacture them and that's all going to change in the next few weeks when Giga Berlin opens up. So whilst other car manufacturers definitely entering the EV market I wouldn't call this catching up as such and definitely not overtaking them. Another negative spin on Tesla's supreme reign is that hydrogen fuel cell cars are going to be the future, you know, and this battery electric vehicle thing is just a fad technology that won't last and Tesla will die with it. Now, whilst I appreciate there are some use cases for hydrogen fuel cell cars where you can't maybe get access to a charge point, I don't see it catching on mainstream because it just doesn't make sense to me. If you have access to a charge point, why would I want to drive somewhere specifically to fill up my car with something else? And don't forget, we have to then produce the hydrogen. So we've got to use electricity to make the hydrogen, put it in a tanker, transport it to the fuel station, and then we have to drive there specifically out of our way to fill it up. It's, it's outdated. Um, it's the same as petrol and diesel, to be honest. Why would you want to do that? When, if you have access to a charge point, you can just plug in at home and take the electricity and put it directly into your car. And I could also see in the next few years that public chargers are probably going to be a five, 10 minute job to charge up. And I know I've waited that long when I used to go to petrol stations in rush hour to even get to the pump sometimes, let alone queue up and pay as well. There will be some use cases for hydrogen fuel cell cars, as I said, if you haven't got access to a charge point, but I don't see it being mainstream for sure. I haven't researched this very well. I'm just talking from my own convenient experience of owning an electric car and plugging it in at home. So feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Which leads nicely onto the next one, which is that charging takes forever and you have to queue and there's no charges available anywhere. I wish I could take everyone that's ever said that to me on a long journey because I don't think I've ever had to actually wait for a charger when even in busy periods um, there's always been plenty available. Now merely I don't charge that frequently but whenever I've turned up there's been like two or three Teslas in there and it's like an eight or twelve bay charging station. In fact let's have a quick look now because you can look on the supercharge map. So the nearest one has that's got a six bay charging station there's three available. Newport Pagnell's 12 bays uh, that's got 10 available, Banbury's 9 bays available, uh, Leamington Spa 6 bays, Rugby 3 bays, um, there's just absolutely loads available around the county right now and we are midday-ish on a Sunday afternoon when you'd expect lots of people to maybe be travelling around. The busy periods that I've experienced are like if I'm going to the beach on a sunny day 
or if I'm going like key holiday destinations during the summer holidays and stuff like that. But even then, as I said, I don't think I've ever waited. And because the charge times are so quick, you get lots of movement of cars going in and out. As a Tesla owner, we're very lucky because we can access the entire supercharging network. And currently in the UK, it's only Teslas that can access that. But we also have the bonus that we can access any other public charging network as well. So we've got literally the choice of any charger within the whole of the UK and all companies are rolling out more and more charging stations and Tesla are doing the same. If we look at the supercharger map for Tesla, you can see they've got loads more sites planned for 2022 to keep up with the demand and with quicker and quicker charge times coming with newer vehicles and new designs, I think if anything we've got too much capacity. Um, charging capacity, which is never a bad thing. So there are plenty of chargers and they're located pretty much everywhere you'll need them. Myth busted. The next myth keeps cropping up in comments on my videos and I can't believe this, but it's where Teslas are worse for the environment than combustion cars. I mean, really? Come on, surely not. But the common argument is that the CO2 produced to make the battery exceeds that of the entire CO2 produced by a combustion car in its entire lifetime. I looked at the hard factual evidence on this from scientific studies that also included the recycling of the battery as well before you throw that into the mix and not a single study even came close to suggesting that EVs are worse for the environment than combustion cars. There is CO2 production in the manufacture of EVs, don't get me wrong, but what they all found was that about 25,000 miles is when the CO2 produced by an EV is about the same as a combustion car. Now I'm pretty sure that most cars are going to drive more than 25,000 miles in their lifetime with, I don't know what, the average car doing 100, 150,000 miles? So for the next 75 plus thousand miles that the car is doing, the combustion car is way more polluting. These studies were done on electricity mixes between 2015 and 2019. So with the greener and greener energy mixes as well, that break even point is going to be coming lower and lower. And with the efficiencies of EVs improving, again, it's going to come lower. And one of these studies was done on the e-Golf, which from my understanding is not the most advanced electric vehicle you can buy. So no, Teslas are not worse for the environment than combustion car when the entire product life cycle is considered. The next one relates to Tesla's financial situation and the fact that they're going to go bankrupt anytime soon and they rely purely on tax credits and the fact that they get pollution credits to fund their profits. Well, a couple of years ago that might have been true because I think Elon Musk even thought that Tesla were going to go bankrupt at one point. But that's not true lately. In fact, last year they made 5.5 billion in profit, breaking their previous year's record of 3.5 billion. Their profit margin on each car is about 30%. If you compare that to the automotive average, which is probably around 6 to 8%, Tesla's like three times better than that. They sold about 1 million cars last year and that's not through lack of demand. If you try and order a car currently on the Tesla website, the earliest I think you can get it is July with some models actually predicted to be delivered February 2023, which is what, 11 months from now? And don't forget there's other revenue streams coming on board. So you've got robo taxis, a ride sharing service potentially, full self-driving subscriptions, an app store if they develop that, the Tesla robot, whatever that's going to materialize into. Basically, they're very profitable. I doubt their share price is going to plummet anytime soon soon and they're definitely not going to go bankrupt. Moving on then, the next myth is that Tesla can't do mass production. And I think this stems from the early days when they were blighted with loads of production issues. Don't forget, it's the first car company in many, 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 many years in recent history to actually go into mass production from scratch. So it was bound to have some production issues when it first started. However, they appear to have sorted this out with their paint issues and panel gaps, and more importantly, output all being resolved. Tesla's factories are heavily automated and they design and program all the machinery themselves from what I know. Going back to the CEO of Volkswagen, he commented how advanced Tesla plants actually are. In Berlin, they're planning to make 500,000 Teslas a year with only 7,000 people. That's 90 cars coming off a single line every hour. It takes Tesla on average about 10 hours per vehicle. Compare that to Volkswagen, who currently takes 30 hours to produce a vehicle with a target of 20. That's still double the time it takes Tesla to make it where Tesla are at now. So although they were dogged with the issues initially, they seem to have learned very quickly and ramping up production is getting better and better with every single time they open a new facility. Hopefully that puts to bed any worries you have about Teslas if you're thinking of buying one, or if you already own one, gives you the ammo you need to forward on to people that were doubting your purchase decision. Let me know in the comments below if I missed any, or if you can bust them even more open than I did. Now, if you got this far, I'm gonna believe you maybe found it reasonably interesting, which if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button and give it a like, because that helps the video and the channel loads. Cheers, I will see you soon.